Hi, I'm going to talk to you about super fast event stream processing using a converged database. My name is Tathanka Lahiri, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Data and in Memory Technologies for Oracle Database. So, what is event data? Events are basically discrete data records generated by large forms of data sources describing something that happened. Could be a measurement, could be some location information, could be an audit log event. Events basically include a timestamp of when the event occurred, something that describes the source of the event, whether it's an IP address or a vehicle ID or a mobile device, etc., and some variable details depending on the type of event, such as maybe energy consumption, um, server metrics, location information, etc. Now, events have certain characteristics. Event data is very high volume, has a very high arrival rate. So most event stream processing systems must process billions of events per day, such as cloud monitoring systems or cellular billing systems. Events also become obsolete fairly quickly. They arrive rapidly, they're ingested, they're analyzed, older events are analyzed less frequently for historical reporting. And so they can be easily, you know, compressed and summarized as they age. And eventually they're archived for long-term retention, at which point they can be highly compressed and summarized to maximize space savings. So with that, what is event stream processing? Event stream processing is a very exciting and growing new database use case characterized by continuous ingestion of high frequency event data. Real time analytics on that data as the data remains in motion and constant background data organization to compress and summarize the data before it finally comes to rest as archival data. So it's a very interesting and emerging uh, uh, you know, use case for databases. And that's the topic of my presentation today. Um, event stream processing systems must satisfy some key requirements. They must have a flexible data model so that they can support a wide variety of data sources, dynamically added new data sources, such as a new device type added to a home network. They must support very high speed ingest, billions of events per day, real time analytics on that data so that you can detect things like fires and leaks or fraud in real time, not after they happen. They must support a wide, rich portfolio of analytic query capabilities so that they can do sophisticated analyses on sliding windows of event data. And they must support automatic data management, automatic data lifecycle management with compression, summarization, archiving, etc in order to avoid unbounded growth of event data. Now, there are two basic ways one can go about building a system for event stream processing. One is to use application tier dedicated single purpose event stream engines that do this ingestion transformation analysis on the data and then propagate basically the final data to uh, the database or object store where the data is retained for long-term purposes. Now, the drawback of this approach is, um, first of all, these engines typically do not have access to all the data, and that constrains the analytics they can run. Typically, moving data between these engines and to the database uh, requires complex data integration, not just simple replication, because the formats are different. And of course, by having your data in multiple places, you incur all the you know, operational headaches of fragmenting your data, um, having you know, manageability uh, issues, no single security model, etc. Lots of issues that you get with data in multiple places. So in this presentation, we will discuss an alternative, which is to use a converged database like Oracle database for event stream processing. This has many benefits. First of all, the database has access to all the data for all, anal all analytic purposes. You can run both short-term and long-term analytics on the same data. 
If any data movement is required, it's basically a matter of simple data replication compared to complex data integration. And of course, you get the benefits of converged database, having access to many different data models, processing algorithms, and having a unified security model, as well as um, mature HADR technologies. So let's talk about Oracle Database for event stream processing. The first requirement is flexible data model. Now, the good news is Oracle Database has native support for JSON, which is extremely useful for representing variable format event payloads. JSON is fully integrated with SQL in Oracle Database. You can freely mix JSON with SQL data types, seamlessly navigate JSON using parts, JSON dot notation, um, and you can index any JSON field using functional indexes. Furthermore, in-memory columnar uh, processing, which I'll talk about later on, allows much faster analytics on this JSON data. So you can use JSON for event data, particularly for the variable details for each event. Now, the next thing we need for an event stream processing architecture is very high speed ingest capabilities. The very first step of ingest is capturing the data from the source. And for this, we have Oracle Golden Gate for fast data capture, which is the industry leading product for real time event data capture. Provides a lot of rich functionality, including change data capture, data replication, integration, um, as well as a lot of other you know, cool uh, properties and um, mechanisms that, that can be used against event data. It has the widest range of supported data sources and targets in addition to Oracle Database. The most important thing about Golden Gate to note is it is parallel end to end. It can capture in parallel. This is a very important property of Golden Gate and it can apply in parallel. Therefore, ensuring the Golden Gate capture and replication is never a bottleneck. It is also now fully cloud native, managed by Oracle completely so that your patching upgrades are handled seamlessly with the benefits of auto scale, elasticity, etc., All the benefits of running on the cloud. So Golden Gate is step one, capture the data from event sources. The next step is, you know, getting the data actually into the database, data absorption. And for this, we have what we call the mem optimized row store, which is a memory optimized mechanism for inserting data at very high rates into the database ideal for lightweight events. The way this works is events are individually, you know, deposited into an in-memory buffer. And that in-memory buffer is asynchronously written to storage by background worker processes. Converting these, you know, lightweight single turn um, ingests into high volume, large batches of inserts. So what happens with this is we get a massive boost in the throughput of inserts because databases do best when you give them a lot of data to process. So we've measured, you know, 25 million inserts per day, uh, more than 21 trillion inserts per day on a single two socket server. So an amazing technology for super high speed ingest. For large scale ingest, you want to avoid bottlenecking on any single table resources and Oracle partitioning, which you're all familiar with, I won't cover in any detail here, can let you scale out your ingest workload across multiple tables, multiple physical tables. So a single logical table can be partitioned into multiple physical subtables or partitions, spreading out the load of ingest across these multiple units. Oracle has a wide variety of partitioning strategies Events are typically queried by a combination of source and time range. So a typical strategy could be to partition by source so that different sources write to different partitions and then to sub partition by time range to accelerate analytic queries against those tables as well. So you get both fast ingest as well as fast analytics. Hash partition by source uh, and interval partition by time um, is the way to typically organized your partitioned event data. When you run out of, you know, headroom on a single uh, machine, on a single server, 
Oracle's real application clusters, which is another very well-known technology, can be used to further scale out your event processing workload. And Rack, being a very mature scale-out technology, can handle both transactional operations like event ingest, as well as analytic operations for event analysis on the same database. It is a highly optimized technology for Oracle's you know, preferred platforms like Exadata, Oracle Cloud, Autonomous Database. Gives you both scalability and performance, the more hosts you get, the more throughput you get, as well as fault tolerance, the more hosts you add, the more highly available the system becomes because any single host failure basically has no effect on the running workload. So it's a very, very good technology to scale out across multiple hosts. Now, what if a single database isn't even enough? If you have you know, such a high volume workload, you need actually multiple data databases. And that can happen. You know, Every database has some edge conditions and limits uh, beyond a certain size and volume. So for that, we have Oracle sharding, which really makes event stream processing hyperscale. Each shard basically is a fault isolated database. The sharded database natively supports SQL for more than, more than 100 shards, hundreds of shards typically. It supports cross shard queries for analytics on the event data, as well as online organization and uh, addition and you know, deletion of shards. This is truly the ultimate mechanism for scalability because these are independent databases. As you add databases, you get linear increase in scalability. You would typically want to shard your workload by source ID so that different shards basically respond to data from different sources. Um, you get scalability, both capacity and throughput. And you get improved fault isolation because these shards are also independent and fault isolated. So it's a great technology to get you to hyperscale with event stream processing. All right, now that we've shown Oracle has great technology for variable data and real uh, and uh, high speed ingest, let's talk about the next requirement, which is real time analytics. Now, real time analytics is needed again because we want to react to events quickly. And the first uh, and very important technology for this purpose is database in memory which is based on a very simple premise. There are two formats for data. The row format is great for transactional operations, such as event ingest. And the column format is ideal for event analytics. And database in memory gives you both formats simultaneously for the same table at the same time. Event ingest automatically uses the high op highly optimized row format including perhaps the mem-optimized uh, mechanism I described earlier, achieving you know, tens of millions of events ingested per second. Whereas the column format gives you very high-speed analytics at the rate of billions of rows per second um, by organizing data in columns. And the reason the column format is so fast is fundamentally because of this one reason. First of all, you can access only the columns that you need for a query. And modern CPUs all have SIMD vector instructions that can process multiple values of one instruction. That can be used to greatly accelerate the processing of your analytic query against columns. So you can filter and scan at the rate of billions of rows per second per CPU core. While the row format, no matter how good it is, will never exceed a few million per second for analysis purposes. So you can use database in memory to maximize your performance per CPU core. To leverage multiple CPU cores, Oracle's mature and well-done parallel execution framework can be used to scale up your workload on a single server and scale out your workload across CPUs on multiple servers on a rack cluster. This is again something most of you should know, so I won't spend too much time on, on this topic. But basically the way PQ works is there is a coordinator process which allocates a pool of background server processes that execute the uh, queries actually in parallel. And this is totally transparent to the application. When you combine parallel execution par and partitioning, something magical happens. You basically suddenly get a system that combines the benefit of shared nothing and shared storage architectures. 
Parallel execution and partitioning can be combined so that each set of parallel query workers on each machine run against independent disjoint sets of partitions so that there is no inter-instance communication that could slow down the workload. So it's a fantastic way to get really good analytic performance against your workload by dividing up the partition so that inter-instance communication is almost eliminated. The final uh, mechanism to get really good analytic performance is attribute clustering. The idea here is when I ingest data, I really want to sort the data as, it's, as it comes in to get the optimal order on storage so that analytic queries can run optimally. So in the case of events, as I said earlier, it's typical that we would want to you know, or query them by source and time range. So why not order them as they come in by source and time range through this simple attribute clustering directive? That way, if I have a read, you know, table of readings from various meters, I can organize that table sorted by meter ID and time so that queries on meter ID and time can very quickly find the values that they need to start from or they need to access, sorry. In a way, it is like having the benefits of indexing without actually physically having to index the table, avoiding the issues and overheads of index maintenance. So it's a very, very powerful mechanism to get the data in the right order when it comes into the database. The next area that, or that any system needs is rich streaming analytics functionality. Now, Oracle Database has a very wide range of analytic capabilities, which I can't possibly do any justice to in this presentation. But broadly speaking, there are three classes of analytic functions. <clears throat> functions that are row level, return a single value per row. Functions that are aggregate, like min and max, that return one value for a, you know, a set of rows. But the interesting uh, uh, type of function for, for streaming applications are window functions, which divide the data into windows or groups. And then for every row, return a value that depends on which group that row belongs to. So if, if I want to find the max energy reading in every hourly you know, window, I can write a query that looks a bit like this, where I partition the data into hourly buckets and then find the max reading in each of those buckets and return that value for each row in that bucket. And this, can, this has many applications. I can look for max energy as I've shown here, I can look for ways to rank energy consumption within a certain period. Um, I can look for the, you know, most, the biggest uh, sort of swings in energy consumption from the prior interval. So it's a very, very sophisticated mechanism to run deep streaming analytics. The other very important feature for streaming analytic performance is to detect, for functionality, excuse me, is to detect patterns of interesting events. So if I'm looking, for instance, for a pattern where in two successive periods, my energy consumption went up, I could define my pattern such that it is an event where the consumption is bigger than the last period, and then declare the pattern con is con uh, consists of at least two of these occurrences. So if you look at this example, it's a, it's a very simple query that would take a lot of SQL to write, trans you know, traditional SQL to write. You could write it in traditional SQL, would require self-joins and correlated subqueries. And pattern matching can be used to you know, detect a variety of things, like you know, could be used to look for fraudulent pattern in a credit card uh, charge sequence. It could be used to look for double dips in the stock market, um, a whole variety of different use cases where what matters is finding the pattern of events that indicates something of interest is going on. Uh, the final a uh, streaming analytic capability that is required for event stream processing systems is actually machine learning. You do need often to run machine learning algorithms on event data to predict things about the event stream that you're monitoring. An Oracle database is a wide portfolio of machine learning algorithms. Um, An Oracle's auto ML mechanism will let you automatically detect and select the best you know, algorithm and model for a particular scenario as well as the ideal you know, data samples for the model, minimizing signal to noise ratio. The benefit of this is your data stays in the database. It doesn't have to leave the database and you can run your training and inferencing on that converged database in place. Big, big advantage compared to extracting the data 
running a model and then writing the results back somewhere else. So great technology for event stream applications. The final requirement for event stream systems is to be able to reorganize data in the background continuously. Event streams are broadly classifiable into three zones of optimization. The first zone is one where you target it for write optimization, for write performance. The next zone is targeted for read performance because you will run real-time analytics on that recent data. And finally, when you want to retain data but not query it very much, you really want to optimize it for space. So the final zone is one that is space optimized. So in terms of Oracle's mechanisms, the write optimized zone is a set of partitions, the recent partitions, that you declare mem optimized for write for super fast ingest. And these typically should not be compressed because you want the highest possible write performance. As the data get after the data bring gets into the database, then you want to start optimizing it for read performance. And this is when you want to declare that data to be in memory to get that real-time analytic performance against hot data. Um, you can store the data both in memory, and if you have exadata, the column store also expands to the flash storage. So you can also uh, leverage in memory on the storage tier with exadata using this uh, uh, technique that we call cell memory in addition to in memory. I won't go into in detail today, but in memory expands to the storage tier on exadata. And then once the data is sufficiently old, you want to start compressing it because now you don't want it to occupy too much space. And hybrid columnar compression is a well-known technique that gives you, you know, fairly significant space savings. In addition, you may want to downsample or summarize the data to occupy even less space. Now, this combination can be accomplished by automatic data optimization as well as DBMS scheduler. So automatic data optimization is a background organization of data based on user-specified policies. So user might say that I want my hot partitions in memory, but when they become older than a few days, take them out of the column store. The user might say, I want my recent data uncompressed. I want my colder data compressed with increasing levels of compression, perhaps based on the recency of access. The user can also have policies causing the data to be moved to colder store, uh, to a colder, less expensive storage tier, such as you know, moving from a flash storage tier to a disk-based storage tier. It can be done through automatic data optimization. And the database scheduler is a job scheduling mechanism that you can use to run you know, periodic background jobs to perform logical transformations on the data, such as transform, you know, downsampling or summarizing the data at specific time intervals. So let's talk about a, a bit about downsampling. Downsampling typically applies to measurements and metric events. So you might, I might have meter readings that are frequently you know, uh, you know, collected, maybe at every five minute intervals. But after the readings are a day old, I would like them to be rolled up into, um, basically into hourly intervals. And then after those hourly intervals are say, a month old, I'd like them to be rolled up into daily intervals. So this is a very you know, typical sort of event stream processing use case for smart metering applications. So the way this would run is you have a DBMS scheduler job that runs a query, finding the older events, inserts them into the, the, the more compressed, the more summarized table, and then deletes the source partitions. And you can keep ch chaining this process across multiple tables to create more and more condensed and compressed summaries of your data. There are many, many examples of event stream processing in action for Oracle Database. I can't cover this in too much detail today, but if you look at these three examples, a telecom example, a law enforcement example, and a stock exchange, they all have the same common characteristic. Very high event, incoming event volume, an enormous amount of data processed per day, and all of these systems run on Oracle Rack database and on Exadata. And with that, I would like to hand it over to Shashank Chavan, Vice President of Memory Technologies, who will talk about these technologies you know, applied to event stream processing um, through a short demonstration. Over to you, Shashank. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tirthankar. 
Hello, everyone. I have some slides I want to show you of a demo we did recently, which shows the Oracle RDBMS as an event streaming processing system that's used for DevOps monitoring. DevOps is about ensuring that a company's applications and services can be delivered at high velocity and reliability. Event system metrics like CPU utilization and network traffic are collected from systems running in a data center and analyzed in real time to detect if there are anomalous behavior going on. Event streams processing solutions need fast ingestion, real time analytics, data lifecycle management, alerting mechanisms, and reporting tools. Now, Prometheus is a widely known metrics monitoring and alerting solution used for DevOps today. It primarily consists of a server, which collects and stores event metrics into a time series database, and data exporters, which are binaries that run on the systems we want to monitor and expose those metrics we want to collect. The Prometheus server pulls these event metrics from the data exporters via HTTP and stores them. The data collected can be queried and visualized with an open source visualization tool called Grafana. Queries are written in Prometheus's query language called PromQL. The results of those queries are sent back in JSON and plotted or tabularized in Grafana dashboards. Prometheus's ecosystem includes alerting. Policies can be defined to generate alerts once a threshold is exceeded. For example, an email can be sent if a system is low on disk space. Now, we thought, wouldn't it be cool to see how easily the Oracle RDBMS can replace Prometheus's storage engine to demonstrate its event streaming processing capabilities? So we got rid of Prometheus and replaced it with Oracle. We used Exadata as our highly optimized computing platform to run the database. We bring in RAP for horizontal scalability and availability. Interval partitioning is used to separate out the incoming metrics by name and time. This improves ingestion speed and query performance and facilitates data management. We create a PL SQL Prometheus package to simplify the handling of all logistics related to Prometheus, such as regularly pulling metrics from HTTP endpoints on the servers being monitored. Data is rapidly ingested using the mem Optimize for write feature. We store the metrics as JSON in the database for absolute flexibility. And the database in memory feature is used to enable real-time analytics. We created an Oracle plugin for Grafana that allows us to directly connect to and query the database using either SQL or PromQL. And alert rules are translated into DBMS scheduler jobs, which run in the background and can trigger an action once an alarm goes off. Similarly, ADO policies are used to implement any ILM strategy of our liking. For example, data can be automatically compressed 12 hours after being ingested. For the demo, we have 100 hosts spread across two geographical locations. We have 150,000 event metrics monitored every 15 seconds. And with the mem optimized for write feature, we can ingest at 25 million rows per second. Once we start up the database and load the Prometheus configuration file, we're off and running. Event metrics are automatically and periodically ingested into the database. When we log into Grafana, we're greeted by a dashboard, which shows how the systems in our fleet are doing. All 100 nodes are up, so that's positive. Some of the metric events we're tracking include CPU utilization, memory availability, and disk read-write performance. We can add a new panel to our dashboard to look specifically at my dev box and monitor the CPU utilization there. Notice that we can write the query using PromQL directly so that from a Prometheus user's perspective, everything is seamless. The PromQL string is translated on the database server into SQL and then executed. Next, we're going to run a CPU heavy application on my dev box that ends up allocating a lot of memory. Within seconds, you can see the CPU and memory related metric events plotted on the Grafana panels, showing the increase in CPU across different CPUs and the reduction of available memory across the system. Soon the application terminates because it runs out of memory 
and CPU activity and available memory return back to the normal levels. To demonstrate the alert trigger mechanism, we instituted a policy that fires off an email once an instance goes down. So in this case, I manually brought the system down and within seconds, an email was sent. The dashboard confirms that a node is down and now the DevOps team has some work to do. Summary. The Oracle database is a class leading event stream processing system. It has all the capabilities needed, such as flexible data model support with relational and JSON, high-speed ingest capabilities like mem-optimized tables, streaming and real-time analytics with advanced SQL functionality and in-memory columnar technologies, and thorough and robust automatic event lifecycle management capabilities. <laughs>